Welcome back. In this tutorial, we'll discuss array ordering methods in system log. There are four methods. One is shuffle, sort, or sort, reverse. Shuffle, what it does, it randomizes the order of the elements in the array. Whereas sort method, it does this way. In ascending order, it arranges the elements of one packed array. R sort also will do on unpacked array, but in descending order. Just the name is the R means reverse sort. So sort does in ascending order, R sort does in descending order on unpacked arrays. Whereas reverse reverse method it works on packed array and unpacked array as well it reverses all the elements and the point to be noted here is sort method and or sort method these two methods it is optional to use with class whereas with shuffle and reverse with the shuffle and reverse we cannot use the with class if we use them compilation error will come so let's see with examples. Here, this is the static array we have. A, R, R. And it, this has got totally eight elements. So these are the eight elements. Here, four and this four. And this Q is of type Q only. This, there are Q system and like Qs are there. And uh, this is unbounded. Q. And in this Q, what we are doing, we are using this push back and we are uh, inserting this 45, 30, 99, 51, 85. Them we are keeping inside this Q. So, because of this push back, the way they have been entered in that order only, they will be appearing in the Q. Meaning at first index this 45, the second index this 30, like that. That order is maintained because of this pushback. Now we are calling this print array Q uh, function here. Oh, this is the function called so simply to print out this uh, static Q, uh, static array contains and Q contains. So if you see here this function here. This is the print underscore array Q. So what it is doing, it is just printing out A, R, R contents and Q contents. Next, what we have this shuffle method. So if you see this shuffle method, we are calling the function there and the function is written here. Simply we are applying on A, R, R, this shuffle method. This is the with, with the help of dot shuffle. So if you do the shuffle on this AR variable and Q variable, this is the outcome. This is the outcome. All right. They, they are kept in a randomized way. So we cannot predict uh, like this will come first, this will come first like that. They've been kept in randomized way. Similarly, this Q variables also been, I mean, Q elements also been kept in a randomized way. Now, after shuffle, we are calling this reverse method. So if you see this reverse method here, after shuffle, we, have, we are calling this reverse method. So simply on ARR, we are applying this dot reverse. Reverse is the keyword. This is the method. This is, this is the function. Met either you call it as a function or method. These are the functions or methods in array ordering. Uh, that is, array, these are called array ordering methods. So now, what is that we are doing after shuffle? We are calling this function, reverse method. So if you see here, after shuffle, th these are the status, right? After shuffle, these are the status of this array and queue. 
when you call a reverse method, now current updates are this. So these will be reversed. Like if you see the six, four, and then six, then five, then two, then nine, then three, then 10. This is perfectly reversed, then Q. Then last is 99 minutes, your first will be 99. So 99, 85, 51, 30, 45. So that is perfectly reversed. So this, that is about the reverse method. After reverse, what we are doing here, which function call is done, sort method. So what it does, it arranges them in ascending order. So if you see here, this, this, this is how the status is after reverse method been called. So what it does, this sort method arranges them in an ascending order. So two, three, you can see here, two, three, and then four, and then five, and then six, six, and then nine, ten. So all been arranged in ascending order. And here also from the queue, elements been arranged in ascending order. After that uh, method been called sort method, we are calling R sort method. R sort method, if you see here, we are using an R sort method simply this A with the variable name, this ARR is a variable name dot R sort. So what it does is simply in descending order. So whatever, the, these are the current status, right? So completely in descending order. In this, this you can see the Q current status and descending order. So that's how uh, this uh, array ordering methods are functioning. Okay. So uh, yeah, with, mm, let, let's simulate this and see. Let's copy and go to the EDA playground and paste it here. And uh, select this tool. That is all the Vera Pro, and then run. So here you can see these are the actual elements in array and queue. After shuffle, we as as been said, we cannot predict their uh, like arranged in random way. So you can see the output here. Then we are calling the reverse method. So after shuffle, this, this, these are the current status of array and queue. So from here, if you see, they've been like reversed. Six, then nine, then six, then two, four, then five, ten, three, five, ten, three. And this queue, if you see, uh, 45, 85, 51, 99, 30. So perfectly they are reversed. Then sort what it does, it arranges all the elements in ascending order. You can see all are arranged in ascending order. Same in the queue also. What R sort does in descending order it arranges. So perfectly in descending order they've been arranged. So that's how this is. Uh, this is about this uh, array ordering methods. Now, if you go to next after this array ordering methods, we have array reduction methods. So let's go to the array reduction methods. So in the array reduction methods, we have here we can see one, two, three, four, five. This method, that is AND method, it is going to do bitwise AND of all elements of the array. So bitwise AND means, in Verilog already we studied, like you have. Suppose say you have eight. What is the binary equivalent of that? One, 
zero, 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 right? Now let's say we have five. The binary equivalent here is zero, one, zero, one. So what it does is it performs the bitwise, like this zero with this one, this zero with this zero, this zero with this one, like that. So this is bitwise R, this R method. This same example, if you take, R operation will be performed bitwise. Now, coming to the XOR method, this is again bitwise, XOR operation will be performed. Coming to the sum here, returns the sum of all elements of the array. So, if we have five elements, and five elements sum will be taken. So that will be read. Whereas a product, all elements product will be taken. So that's how these uh, methods are functioning. And these methods are called array reduction methods. In array reduction methods, we have this and logical, or is also logical, XOR is also logical. And arithmetic here, sum and product. So let's go to this example here. In this example, uh, we will copy this. Straight away, we'll go to the media uh, playground. We'll paste it here. So you can see here we have we have here one static array and one queue. In queue we are keeping the same like 45, 30, 49, uh, 99, and 51, and then 85. So we are printing out this. This is for print array. We are calling the function here. Somewhere function is defined here. If you see here, this is the function call. I mean function is defined here. This function is called a print underscore array underscore q. What this function is doing basically, it is printing out the static array contents and the q contents. After that, we are going for the methods. First method is and method. And is performed on this q and also on array. So that's why we have array dot and and q dot and. And then we are going for R to perform the R over this array elements and Q elements. And then the XOR operation. And then we are going for the sum, sum of all the elements that are there in the AR uh, array and the Q. And then finally product. So if you do this here, that is, uh, you can exercise this one. I'll just run this one. So let this and run. So here, we have these elements, right? If you see this sum, let's go to the sum of these elements. So let me take this one. You can see here five plus six plus nine plus two plus three plus four plus six plus ten. So if you see the sum, it is 45. And then Q means, uh, I mean, on Q, on Q elements, we have this part, uh, like 45 plus 30 plus 99 plus 51 plus 85. So that is 310. So we have 310. So this is about the sum. Whereas if you see the product, let's do the product of all that. 5 into 6 into 
and then uh, 0 0.26 into 9 into then 2 into 3 into 4 into 6 into finally 10 so that is this number so this number you can see here so perfectly matching right this number and this number so similarly you can work out for this q elements also and now coming to this uh, performing the and operation it is like we have to convert the way i just uh, shown here this way so you have to convert all of this like phi is converted to binary and six is converted to binary like that and our operation is performed over all of this the, like our operation or and operation or xr operation and whatever the final thing comes that is considered as a result so this is an uh, exercise to you people you can work out because i had to convert all of them to this way to the binary and then what else to discuss here nothing okay in case if you have any doubts in this regard you post them in the comment section okay now coming to we have done array reduction and this finally iterator index uh, iterator index querying in this in iterator index querying we have something called like this like array this is the variable name of that array find x with x this this has been compared with x dot index so what it does is like let's say these are the like let's let me copy this let me paste it here let me remove all this Now, if I put the index here, this is zero, and then this is at one, this is at two, this is at three, this is at four, this is at five, this is at six, this is at seven. Now, if you see, this zero index and the value of this index zero that is zero if that is equal to the element then that is what considered here In, uh, making sense i repeat like if you take this four index value is four and the element value is also four so that is what it is finding such how many are there that count it will return like if you see here, this six index value is six, and the element value is also six, and the index value is seven, and the element value is also seven. So that is what it is comparing and do, returning. So what it does, the iterator index querying method, iterates over array indexes or elements at each iteration. So this is here as mentioned about the uh, find method compares the index value with the element and push pushes in it into the queue so it is uh, it also like captures them like which values are there i mean not only the count it uh, i mean here it pushes them like this is uh, if you see this for four it pushes into the queue and then six six value also will push it into the queue seven is pushed into the queue then they are actually uh, uh, capturing like these values where index value is matched with the element value these element values are uh, taken into the queue so that is what it means we will see this example 
Söylesi... Söylesi... Kompi. Burada da video yapıyor. Destim. Paste. Select the tool here. Alt everywhere up pro and drag. Now if you see here, the count is three having the same index and element. And they've been pushed like uh, the set. This four will be taken, six will be taken, seven will be taken. So these elements are taken. How is that happening? Like this, it is happening. Array dot find this x some variable with the x equal to x dot index. That particular variable, whatever the variable that you take, that is equal to. I mean, comparing. Equal to is the the index well index of that particular element that is the meaning and where we are giving I mean holding them in Q we are holding what is Q variable Q variable is of type Q only system would like Qs are there na that so then with the help of this uh, Q dot size. What it does, this dot size returns the how many elements are there in this particular variable, Q variable. So it is returning like as, as we work it out here, here, three are there, right? It will be returning three to this Q size. This Q size. What is Q size? Q size is integer time. So now this display is is letting us know how many such elements are there whose value element value and index value are matching how many are there such so that one will be done with this display and this display will be doing what those elements are like because these elements were capturing in this queue right but then we are printing out to print it once this percentage p format specifier is used so that is what exactly here happening. Same index and elements are four, six, seven. And uh, count here it has printed three. So which we worked out here, it is correct. This four, this six, and this seven. Whose value, element value, and index value can be seen same here, same. Okay, so I think with that we have completed all of this. Uh, iterator index qu querying is done. Array reduction is also done. Array reduction is also done. And array ordering is also done. So with this uh, recording, it is uh, completed like array manipulation method methods all of them we have covered so in the next uh, recording we will go to structures and unions because the system with like queues already been covered because we are using the queues uh, here in some of the topics here so i thought to cover first queue uh, so i covered the queue queues system with like queues and mm, uh, Today's recording, I mean, this in this recording, we have covered all of this array ordering methods, array reduction methods, iterator index query. So with this, we have covered array manipulation methods. Next will be structures and unions in SV. Okay, in case of any doubts, please post them in comment section. Okay, thank you.